Hey everyone, this is graphic designer Roberto Blake, and in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about how much you should charge as a graphic designer. If you're new to the channel, I usually do graphic design videos on Mondays, but I also add a few new videos to the channel throughout the week, so make sure you're subscribed so you're getting everything. So if you're a graphic designer, you're probably wondering what you should be charging your clients. A lot of people will give you a lot of different answers for this. They'll tell you to find out what designers with your level of experience um, have, who have been working for a while charge. They will tell you to go based on the market or what you think that people in your area can afford, uh, etc. All of those things are interesting ways of looking at it, but in my opinion, they're all dead wrong. If you're working as a graphic designer, if you're working as a freelance graphic designer, you're not working like a salaried person. And frankly, um, I mean, and I'm not disrespecting your professors or anything like that, but it's like they're the wrong person to ask for advice on what you should charge because that's not an academic question. That is a business question. And someone who hasn't competed in the graphic design job market in years and is not working as a freelancer can't really answer that question appropriately for you. And asking another designer isn't always gonna be the answer because one, they're probably not gonna tell you what their rates are and they're probably underselling themselves and they're probably doing it wrong anyway. So for the right answer, we have to turn to entrepreneurship and business advice. You're in business as a graphic designer. You are providing a service, you're not providing a product. So flat rates are kind of out of the question because this is taking away time. Hourly rates are out of the question because you're not an employee, you're a vendor, you're a service provider. So there are gonna be things that you have to consider that a business considers. You have to consider your cost. You also have to consider your profitability. You have to decide how much money and profit you really wanna make, how much you wanna invest into your business, etc. So let's say that what you wanna gross for the end of a year is $40,000. But let's say you don't wanna work 40 hours a week to do that you need to come up with a formula that says working 20 or 30 hours a week on your projects at this rate would get you that money. And then you need to account for what you feel the average is for you to produce that kind of work in terms of a process. And that process and that time accounts for the time you take in client meetings, the time you take to do the brief, do the research, not just the time you're spending in Photoshop, Illustrator, or InDesign, but the entire process of the project so if a logo is taking you 20 hours, even if five hours of that is interaction with the client, you still need to account that into how much you're charging as far as that hourly rate. And then there are some service fees and costs associated with that. What if you have to go outside of your font library to buy the licenses for fonts to use for this project? That's a cost. You shouldn't absorb that cost and take it out of your direct profit that way. You need to figure out that when you're working on logo designs, you need to account for a set amount of cost in that project estimate that you know internally accounts for assets and resources you may need to purchase to get that work done. You need to account for an upper level of how much of this time is going to be put aside just for potentially interacting with the client. And that's what your proposals need to be based on. Now granted, you don't have to necessarily break down and explain every one of those itemized things to your client. And some of it's your internal business practice. So some of it's frankly none of their business how you're going about it as long as you can communicate the value of what they're getting which is the deliverables. That's the files, the packaging, how many revisions, et cetera. That's what you need to be transparent and clear about and what the milestone payments are, what are the deposits, are they up front? That stuff you need to be absolutely transparent about in your invoices. But they don't need to know your internal process of how much you're paying on the stock photos, how much you're paying for the license for jQuery plugins, et cetera, uh, unless you're billing them directly for that instead of building it into your internal cost model, you don't have to put that out there. A lot of people are telling you to charge based on your level of experience, that if you've only been doing design a couple of years that you shouldn't be charging X, Y, or Z. That's not their call to make. They're not in a position to dictate to you what the value of your time is, not to mention that the amount of years you've been a designer, while in theory might be a reflection of the results you produced, that could be completely irrelevant. I've seen kids in the pages of Advanced Photoshop and Photoshop Creative Magazine that are 16, 17 years old. There are leaps and bounds above graphic designers and creative directors that I know have 10 and 20 years of experience. The amount of experience you might have does not necessarily equate to the amount of talent or raw ability that you have 
um, or maybe in five years, you just simply put in more hours and more projects than someone who's been doing it 10 or 20 years. So why should they be able to charge something that you're not able to charge if you're producing a superior quality of work or if you have more outright experience from them even without the years attached to it? So don't think that years and your experience are the rationalization and justification for your pricing. They don't need to be. The results and the value of what you do and your process um, is what will dictate your pricing and frankly also your own profitability. You charge what you believe you can charge and be successful. Whether that means that you price yourself out of a certain market of clients, fine. Maybe you're not dealing with the lower end in the broad market. There are plenty of designers that are not hurting to make their margins and they're charging $5,000 for logo design. Am I saying you go out and do that? No, you might not be uh, Graham Smith. You may not be Jacob Cash. You might not be able to do that. You might not be David Airy. So you can't charge those prices, but don't feel like you have to settle for $100 projects because that's what people expect from you. No, that's a certain clientele. You can price yourself out of the low end market the same way that Apple does by selling a premium product that people value at that price. And don't let someone tell you what your design is worth. Don't let someone say that an advertisement or a logo is not worth $500. That may not be worth it to them. And there might be reasons for that. Maybe it's not worth it to them because they simply don't have the budget. As a vendor, as a service provider, their budget is not your issue unless you want it to be. If you make the conscious choice to say you want to work with people with those budgets, then that's the market that you're going for. And at the same time, you're probably not going to get that upper market of $2,000, $3,000 per assignment if that's who you're catering to, because the approach will be very different. I'm not saying you absolutely can't do that and have a flexible range of clients you work with, but you're less likely to. It's like wedding photographers. You can either decide you want to do 10 weddings a year and charge three and $5,000 from that and make your $50,000 a year, or you can decide that you need to shoot 30 weddings a year at $500 a pop to make less money. It's up to what you think your local market or your not local market, depending on what your situation is, can support and will support and what you can justify charging based on the quality of results that you produce and what you bring to the table. So it's like what I said in your how much do graphic designers make video. You make how much you think you can make. You make what you ask for. Well, it's the same thing with your pricing model. You charge what you think your time is worth and you dictate that. So whether someone says, well, graphic designers with your experience make $20 an hour, $30 an hour, $50 an hour, it's up to you to decide what that is. You could decide that you want $50 an hour. And if you're a good negotiator, you have the right portfolio and you're dealing with the right clientele, maybe you'll get it. And maybe you wouldn't get that business if you were asking for 25 because they wouldn't feel confident in somebody who doesn't have the confidence to ask for what their work is really worth. So just kind of, you know, understand your own value. Be honest with your clients about your value. Be prepared to um, not justify your prices, but be prepared to back up what you're asking for and why it's valued at that. And don't back down. Don't let someone tell you what your work is worth because as a business person, if you decide to tell them, well, the car isn't worth that much, they're probably not going to want to hear it. You decide to tell them their product isn't worth that much, you want to pay half of that, they're probably not going to hear that. They're probably not going to haggle with you. You're not going to get it for half price. I mean, you might, but I doubt it. So to give you a, a rough idea, if you don't want to figure out for yourself what a graphic designer should charge um, and you want a baseline, you want a flat number, well, okay, fine. Here it is. Uh, if you're a graphic designer with comparable experience, if you feel very confident about your work, you produce good results, and you know Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign solid, then you should not be pricing yourself for less than between $20 and $30 per hour. If you are a graphic designer who only knows one software, like the back of your hand, then maybe you're looking at between 18 and 25, depending on what the scale is of how good you are at that one particular software and how okay you are at the other things within Creative Suite. That's what my recommendations on those ranges are. If you need a hard number, instead of being able to determine for yourself what that number should be, fine. Maybe it's between 20 and $30 per hour. In terms of projects, you decide what the value of a project is worth. A logo design is supposed to last, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So 
maybe you should think about the fact that, well, what if they were buying a computer to do their work for that amount of time? Uh, what would the investment be? It's not going to be cheap. So price it accordingly. People pay for an Apple laptop. They pay like 1200, 1400 bucks for that thing. And it's got to last like three to five years, right? They need that to get their work done. A logo represents their entire business. It represents their entire brand identity. It represents their capacity to get clients, get customers. So what's that worth to them? If it's not worth at least $500, I would question how serious that person is. So just take that with a grain of salt and think about the value of what you're providing to a client, what it's going to be used for, the capacity that it's going to be used for, and really use that to determine some of your pricing on your projects. Because um, I know honestly, I wouldn't buy $100 worth of laptop and expect it to last five years. There's no way. I know better. I know better to trust that to be reliable uh, because of what it is. So if I paid $100 for a logo, I wouldn't be expecting the moon and stars. I wouldn't be expecting a bunch of options. I wouldn't be expecting a bunch of revisions. I wouldn't be expecting anything but basic. But for a hundred dollar logo, I would never ask a professional designer to charge that. I must be going to a student or someone who's not even in college yet because there's no way I would insult or demean a professional designer by asking them to do a hundred dollar logo design. There's just no way. Anyway, I hope this video helped you guys understand what you should be charging as graphic designers. If you have more questions, definitely leave that stuff in the comment section below. Um, again, this is my personal advice, my personal experience. Take it with a grain of salt, set your rate cards, put ranges in there, um, you know, figure out how you want to approach doing business and how profitable you want to be. Don't worry about what other people are doing. It's your work, it's your time, so you need to determine its value. Don't forget to like this video if you like it, share it, subscribe. As always, you guys, thanks for watching, and don't forget, create something awesome today.